How to use prompt foo with Jenkins. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.440.3. Attached to this controller, I have an agent that has the prompt foo binary and all of its dependencies installed on it. Now, what is prompt foo? Prompt foo can be found at promptfoo.dev and it gives us the ability to iterate on LLMs faster. Maybe I'm wanting to test OpenAI against Llama against Mistral. If I was doing that by hand, it would be a lot harder to do. But by using PromptFoo, I can compare against all of those different models all at the same time. There's a link to a sample repository down in the description. Let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. What I have is four separate jobs that we're going to be taking a look at. First off, let's take a look at simple CLI. I have a Jenkins file and I have a PromptFoo config.yaml. The PromptFoo config.yaml is the key file to understand how to run PromptFoo. Let's go ahead and take a look at that first. What we're going to be doing is a simple test where we're rephrasing this in language with a body value. And then we're also going to run a separate prompt, translate this to conversational language with the body. Where do these come from? That's down in our tests. So what we have is vars french hello world, vars french I'm hungry, pirate hello world, and also pirate I'm hungry. So it's going to replace language with language and body with body. And it's going to run all of this content out within our job. Now, if we take a look at our Jenkins file, what we have is our agent declaration pointing at an agent that has the label of prompt foo. I'm specifying an environment variable, openai underscore API key. That's because by default, right now we're going to be going against openai for our tests. Then we do a quick check for prompt foo version to see which version we have installed. And then finally, we run the evaluation. Now, since I'm running inside of directories, I'm specifying the directory down to prompt foo eval. Prompt foo eval will take that prompt foo config YAML file and process it and run it. So let's go ahead and go back over to our controller. I've already run the job. Let's take a look at the output. We can see it was successful. If we go ahead and scroll down, we'll see the output from our version is currently 0560, but it's currently shipping at 571. So I'm running a little bit behind. If we go ahead and scroll down, what we'll see is the help that comes out of the version as well. And then we run our prompt foo eval. We can see that we're running by default against OpenAI GPT 3.5 Turbo. And then let's take a look at the output of this grid. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so we can see the whole grid. We can see our Hello World French. Remember, our definition for our prompt foo is just a couple of placeholders. We have language and body. But if we take a look at our output, we can see French. We can see that it passes. But we can also see that everything is passing. Why is it all passing? Well, we haven't put any validations against what the output is expected. We'll get to that in a minute. But we can see French, hello world, and I'm hungry, and also pirate, hello world, and I'm hungry. And we see that everything is passing. Also, below the table, what we'll see is we had eight successes. So we had, even though we defined just four examples, one, two, three, four, by the time it all explodes out, because we're testing against both rephrase and translate, Again, we have four pieces of data. We have two prompts, so that's equal to eight. So we had eight outputs here. We can also see how many tokens we were using, how much prompt, and how much was cached. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our second example. Now in this first example, we were hard coding everything into our prompt foo config YAML file. In our second example, we're going to take a look at the Jenkins file first. It's going to look very similar. In fact, almost exactly the same as what we did in our first run. Take a look at our prompt foo config file. Now what we see, instead of everything being hard-coded in that file, we're defining a prompts file and also a tests file. Our provider is still our OpenAI GPT 3.5 Turbo. If we take a look at our prompts text, then we can see here our two different prompts that we had over in the first example. In our tests, we just have a CSV file. I'll go ahead and go to raw so you can see it. That is just defining language as the header, body is the header, and then French, French, pirate, pirate, hello world, and I'm hungry. So all of that's there within what we need. So when this prompt foo config file is evaluated, then it's going to go ahead and expand our tests CSV and our prompts text into the full thing. So I can just go ahead and run it just like what we saw in our first file. So let's go ahead and go back over to our controller. Again, I've already run this. We take a look at simple CSV. We'll take a look at the run of that. Again, we have our version. We see the same table output that we saw in the first example. And again, the rest of the job run is exactly the same as what we saw in our first example. So in the first example, everything hard-coded, everything stays self-contained in our prompt foo config file. Now let's go take a look at our third example. Our third example is a simple test. So if we take a look at our config file, 
What we have are our tests, but we also have asserts. So within our asserts, we'll be able to validate what is being returned to us from our tests. Now, again, I'm still using just a single provider. PromptFu makes it possible to where you can compare against multiple providers. But for this example, I'm keeping it simple, staying with one provider for right now. Notice I also still have multiple prompts. So if I was to take a look at the prompts text file, I still have two prompts that we're gonna be running through to see what happens. If we go back into our config, what we have are one, two, three, four, five different tests. But also notice one more thing. I have an output path. So what we're gonna be able to do is take this output and instead of taking a look at it within the job run, what we can do within our Jenkins file, again, this looks very similar to what we just saw, is once the job is complete, we're gonna run an archive artifacts and put the output HTML that's generated from our config file and drop it back up into our job. Let's go take a look at that. So we take a look at our third run. What we're gonna see once we go into the console log, again, everything looks similar. Checking our version, we see this output here, that's okay. We can see that there are six successes and four failures, but then we archive the artifact. Well, how do we see that? Well, if we go back into simple test, click into the job, we'll see our output HTML. If we click into that, then we see that same table. It doesn't have any kind of styling on it, so it's a very basic plain table. But what we can see here is we had a fail. The body was yes, we expected yar, but we got i, so it failed. We also got a fail, again, because it's expecting yar, but it got mihardis, and so on throughout the rest of the examples. We had a couple of passes, we had a couple of fails. But also notice, because we had a couple of failures, remember we had six successes and four failures. If we take a look at the output of the job, the job failed. So prompt foo sent us back a status code of failure. It wasn't a zero, it was a non-zero value. So therefore, from a Jenkins perspective, we can see that that failed. And then finally, let's go take a look at our fourth example. If we take a look at the fourth example, within our Jenkins file, this is similar to what we just saw in our third example. We're gonna be outputting an output HTML, but let's take a look at our config file. So in this config file, we have our prompts file declared. We're using two providers, GPT-3 and GPT-4. We have four configurations for our variables. We have Spanish, French, and German, and then the associated hello worlds, good mornings, and how are yous that are associated with each of those different translations. And then we get down into our tests. So what we can see here is we're able to also use our variables within our assertions. So we're actually going to be doing similarities within a 90% similarity threshold. There are a lot of different other ways to do our assertion types. This one is just similar. Take a look at the documentation for prompt foo to understand all the different options that you do have. So if we were to take a look at the output for this one, we'll go over to number four, we can see that the job failed. So that's our first inkling that, okay, something didn't pass. If we take a look at the console output, again, everything's working as expected that we saw in the third pass, but notice that table is a lot bigger. So if we were to go ahead and go back over into our number one, and click on output HTML, again, this table exploded because not only are we testing two different prompts, not only are we testing three different languages, we're also testing on two different models. So what we can see here as it goes through, we can tell that many of our examples worked out okay, but then we also had some fails. In fact, in this one, we had a failure because the similarity score was only 75% instead of 90%. So therefore, since it was less than that 90% threshold, that run is considered failed. If you've been tasked with trying to figure out which large language models should we use for whatever it is that we're doing, PromptFu will make it easier for you to go ahead and take in all those models, pass in the prompts with the values that you want, and then on the output, you'll be able to tell whether or not that model is gonna work for you, or maybe a different model may be better. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on X at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not take a moment click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBeast TV. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video.